You call it thermodynamic computing, mm -hmm. probabilistic computing. And this is a third branch of computing, isn't it? Yeah, it seems like it, because today we, we have the deterministic computers, right? Your transistors are definitely on or definitely one off. One or zero, yeah. One or zero, it's one or the other, right? And you definitely know which one it is, right? Uh, and then you have a quantum computer, which has superpositions of ones and zero. It's zero plus one, zero minus one. And you know, everything in between. Everything in between, complex numbers, you can make those interfere with one another. But actually having a computer that you're unsure of the state of the computer and it's probabilistic, it's zero or one or something in between, but um, you're not sure exactly the state of the computer. It's actually much more energy efficient because knowledge costs energy. There's this old uh, tale of Maxwell's demon. I don't okay. know if you're familiar with I, that. I, bringing back faint memories, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so you know, M Maxwell's demon, uh, you know, tells us that actually it's, it's a thought experiment that examines the energetic cost of, of knowledge, right? Um, and I, I, I guess I could, <laughs> I could go into it. Uh, but yeah, Ma Maxwell's demon, essentially, you can imagine having a box with a, a partition in the middle, right? Uh, and you have one side of the box has a bunch of red particles and the right side of the box has a bunch of blue particles. And you have a trap door in the middle with a little demon, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, if you, if you keep the trap door open, you, you wait a long time, you know, the balls cross and on average you get a mixed thing where you have red and blue balls in both partitions. Now, where the demon comes in would be, you can actually reverse this process of going to a higher entropy state, right? Which would violate the laws of thermodynamics by having the demon look, if a, if a ball of a certain color comes in, opens the door, if a ball of the right color comes in, the other side opens the door and can filter and again, separate out into a red and blue partition, which seems to violate the second law of thermodynamics that states so that- So therefore there, is a, there must be a cost to that observation. There's an energetic cost, exactly. Yes. No. And so what we see is that a lot of the cost of running a computer comes in when you're trying to maintain its determinism, uh -huh. right? And it turns out that you don't need to always be maintaining determinism when you're running AI algorithms, because AI algorithms are natively probabilistic. Mm -hmm. And so having AI run on a digital deterministic program- Super that, inefficient. That is emulating probabilistic yeah. programs. Yeah, super inefficient. So why not run probabilistic programs on a probabilistic computer? And so just from that, we have just an efficiency and a tightness to the embedding of the algorithms into the physics of the hardware that's really hard to achieve on digital computers. But not only that, we're actually, catering to the 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 imminent what would be otherwise problems uh, uh of 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 uh transistor based computing right um because as you scale down transistors and you try to make them more energy efficient uh unfortunately the fact that transistors are made of matter and they're jiggling causes your transistors to misfire get, and get hot right get, they get hot and and sometimes they they say things they don't don't want to say you know but like they're 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 misfiring uh, and they become effectively stochastic. Um, and instead of uh, trying to filter that noise and filter uh, uh, that stochasticity and, and make it deterministic again, right, through error correction, similar to how we have to filter out the stochasticity in quantum computing with quantum error correction, um, instead we embrace the noise and use it as part of the algorithm. And it's mm. part of our models of the hardware and it's part of the algorithm. And so it's a very different way of thinking. Uh, it's very challenging because we have to rebuild the whole stack to go with it. It's very ambitious, but to us, it's a necessary and clear from first principles, evolutionary step in computing. And it's one that we think is inevitable. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just the ones that are boldly going for it right now. Yeah. You describe thermodynamic computing as being in particularly valuable at describing chemistry and biology because we're talking about thermodynamic systems there. Yeah. You know, chemistry has some quantum effects uh, in there mixed in, but uh, biology, proteins, molecular dynamics at the mesoscales, right? They're it's bouncing. Very, yeah. It, yeah, they're bouncing around. They're, they're jittering around and that's very tough to simulate, right? Because we have to embed that stochastic process into uh, digital computers, right? And and it's, it's a process that these fluctuations happen on very small time scales so you can't just fast forward the movie very efficiently and so for us we're looking to embed 
the physics of protein folding eventually, not, not initially, but protein folding, which happens on a certain time scale because you have big proteins and they're sure. jittering about into the jitters of electrons that we control how they dance. And electrons, because they're much lighter, they jitter much faster. So you get a speed up by embedding the dynamics of proteins into the dynamics of electrons. And that's it. There's no, you know, it's just a, a it's very analogous, the physics of, of the mesoscales of matter to the native physics of the hardware. And so we get a, we get a speed up there.